everyone. Welcome to Member Spotlight. Member Spotlight is the monthly radio show and podcast of the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce. My name is Sarah Persing and I am the Membership Services Manager for the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce and we are broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. Each month, we feature and highlight different businesses and business leaders that are members of the Gwinnett Chamber. And today, we are very excited to have with us Matt Hoffman with Frontline Technology. Hi, Matt. How are you doing today? Doing well. Calm down here just in a moment as we get going. (laughs) (laughs) No worries. No worries. I don't bite. I promise. Thank you, Matt, first of all, for joining us. Um, But I want to go ahead and kind of dive in and kind of turn the mic over to you to give you a little bit of time to explain to us. Just kind of tell us about yourself, what you do, um, what Frontline Technology does, and what you kind of do in your role at Frontline. Well, just a little background on me. I'd like to say that my wife and I were the sleep-deprived parents of two kids under the age of three. Bless you. (laughs) We used to enjoy like all the road trips and jumping out of perfectly good airplanes, but now we have to do those more responsible things like, hey, what's that smell? And if you'll change that diaper, I'll vacuum the house. And kind of in those nap times is where we try to run a business and and see it progress. But we kind of took on a kind of a different type of challenge. You know, there's a lot of IT companies out there. There's a lot of good ones in the area, but we were a little bit different. Uh, we have a big passion for the nonprofits, and so we run an IT company that that's what we focus on. Awesome. Um, so why focus on nonprofits? Uh, we focus on the nonprofits. Um, just kind of my generational history is with a bunch of evangelists and missionaries, so it's kind of inevitable I was going to go that way. I uh, became an ordained minister back in 2005, and all the other founders with Frontline Technology were ministry leaders, pastors, and so we're very passionate about that side of it. Frontline Technology is actually a member of a group of organizations, and we all say that we've got different skill sets, but we're all unified in one purpose, and that's to see lives changed. And so that's that driving force behind why we focus on nonprofits, um, just our history in them, understanding the the vision. A lot of the IT companies in the area are great, um, and they're very good at what they do and focused on the business side of it. Uh, But when it gets to the nonprofit side, not having that experience working in the nonprofits, working inside the church, the visions are different, how things are handled are different, budgets are different, the challenges are different, and we come to the table bringing an understanding that others might not have. And so when we come sit at the table with a pastor or a leader, we can say, hey, we understand what you're going through. How can we help see your full vision fulfilled? Awesome. What um, what exactly is your role with Frontline Technology? Can you elaborate a little bit more on that, like what you specifically do? Uh, I go over the day-to-day operations on who can we reach, how do we reach out to them. But then once we get a uh, client, I sit down with them and really engage with them. Like, who do you have with you? What do you have going on? And truly try to understand. That's the very first thing that we do. Um, Our primary core value is engage because we want to make sure that uh, we understand them so that we can actually help them. We're not going to say, hey, here's this uh, solution that worked for the last five We want to know where are you going? What is your ultimate vision, purpose? Where are you going? And how can we help facilitate that? And then we break apart the challenges. And then I'll put together a solution that's custom made for them and say this piece, this piece, this piece is what you're looking for. And then we put that into action. I think that's awesome because coming from someone that's that works for a nonprofit organization. Um, nonprofits are run completely different than for-profit organizations. And having that background and that knowledge of different um, nonprofits and going into it knowing that not all nonprofits are run the same, not all nonprofits um, have the same mission, vision, that kind of thing, I think that's a good, um, a good value for you guys to have for your clients. So I think that's awesome. Nonprofits, especially churches, rely uh, really heavily on their volunteers. Is this a challenge for you guys at Frontline? It definitely can be until we can kind of get in there and educate them that we're not actually there to replace their volunteers. We're there to actually help bring it all together. We like to use uh, the old saying, camel is a horse designed by a committee. And what we're trying to do is show them how we're trying to coordinate the volunteers we get a unified direction this is where we're trying to go and then say this volunteer is good with this and this one's good with this and then put them in action and show that we're trying to bring everybody together on the same page and we're not trying to say hey all your volunteers great you know now go and do your thing no no we want them there that helps save that helps with the budget concerns 
but having somebody who says this is the way that needs to go and can coordinate the volunteers is where we really come in and try to bring that together and once you understand that we are there to help and bring their volunteers alongside and work with them. That really changes the conversation. It sounds like to me, it's like a community of, of craftsmanship almost. Like when you have um, different skill sets, tons of different skill sets in the room and to, at your disposal, it's it's how do you um, how do you utilize everybody to make the common goal come to life? You know, right? So that's awesome. That's really great. Um, what is a common myth or misconception about security within a nonprofit sector? This is the one that troubles me the most. Um, <laughs> it's mainly because with churches especially, but nonprofits in general, there's a false sense of security. And that because of who they are, people are going to leave them alone. But with the emails and the ransomwares and the attacks that are going out there, those just go out in mass. And the person sitting behind the desk that clicks on the wrong thing, the wrong link, doesn't matter if it's a church, big business, small business, they can all be attacked and come uh, under some type of absolutely uh, of breach, uh, especially with the lack of security that you find there when you see like the disasters that hit. And all of a sudden you see all these little pop-ups going out of, hey, you should donate here for relief, and you find out that was some type of a scam. Well, a lot of the security that is not in place People can actually impersonate those ministries and solicit donations before they're actually caught. They have brought in donations that are not actually meant for them, and it's just because somebody was able to pretend that they are that person. There was actually a 2017 report that showed five ways that churches were actually vulnerable and did not realize it. Uh, one of them was people actually getting in through their security and emptying the bank accounts of the church. Uh, others were getting into their websites and completely defacing them and putting politically charged images on the church websites. Uh, ransomware attacks those those right now are occurring every 14 seconds globally and that again like I was saying that goes to anybody mm -hmm. but then you have pastor email accounts well they do a lot of confidential counseling and there might be some conversations going back and forth and what they found in 2017 was that there were several accounts that were being breached and then all that sensitive information was being released publicly and that just brings a lot of embarrassment to the church and those who were on the other side thinking they were confiding in confidence and then here that is exposed and then some of the big things you see is the databases of the churches were getting breached and so both the people in the congregation donors uh and the staff members themselves their identities were being stolen oh, wow. and it, so it's just as real out there security wise and so that's the biggest myth is that well i'm a church i'm a nonprofit, so i'm okay when in reality the threats are just as big for them as they are for a business. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Kind of taking a different a different route for this one, um, and I like to ask everybody this just because I think that um, you can learn a lot about, um, especially leadership styles for other people when you ask this question. So, tell me who has had an impact on you professionally, and how has that impacted you? In what way has that made you a better professional, better leader for your organization? Well, I know the correct answer here is I'm supposed to say my mother, <laughs> and I believe she's living, listening, so hi, Mom, I love you. But in truth, the answer to this would have to be my grandfather. Uh, he has been a missionary, a pastor for the last 70 years, and watching him and his dedication and the ups and downs, because especially with a startup, things get tough. Mm -hmm. But watching his resolve and his determination – and just watching how he just kind of keeps a level head and he looks at scenarios in different situations and just kind of perseveres through one step at a time. If something big comes up, you just kind of stop for a second. You look at the situation. Uh, you bring people around you. You get kind of the counsel there. You pray about it. And then you take the next step forward. And that kind of mentality and watching him for the years uh, has really been what's kind of brings me and gets me going through each and every day is – Obviously, there is that side of us that we have that same passion to see life's changed. But then the day to day of how do you carry yourself? How do you react? Uh, that's really what's kind of kept us going. Absolutely. OK, so tell us this. This is the member spotlight show. Obviously, we like to talk to our chamber members and, and learn a little bit more about them. So tell us why you joined the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce. Jennifer and I, which is my wife, we moved to Georgia beginning of last year. So we were new to the area. Uh, you take trying to launch a branch of the business out in Georgia where we know nobody it was difficult not just meeting people but meeting the right people that knew other nonprofits churches how to get plugged in 
and I was getting some work done over at Sinorama over in Buford. Ah, and, shout out. Yes. <laughs> and Curtis said, hey, have you considered joining the chamber? And I said, well, I've, we, we have some out in Texas we're a member of, but why? He goes, well, the Gwinnett Chamber is one of the largest in the country, and they have hundreds of nonprofits there. And that was kind of a big light bulb going off, and so that's when we joined the chamber right away. Awesome. We were excited to have you. I, I was a newbie up here, too, so I feel your pain. Um, what programs or events have you guys found to be the most helpful or which ones have had the biggest impact or shown the greatest return on your investment for the chamber? It's a split between the business before hours on Thursdays. I'm <laughs> I'm a morning person. Typically start my days about five o'clock in the morning, so I'm bright eyed and ready to go. And it's just it's it's fun it's different it's not the traditional you get up you speak for 30 seconds you sit back down because that just gets boring after a while but every week there's something different there's some activity and you're getting to work with four or five people and really get to know them and their business and what they're doing and so it really brings a different dynamic to where you know more people you know people more than just the 30 second commercial you know them in the conversations that are happening And the other would be business after hours, because that brings in a different group, a different crowd, people who can't make the business before hours. So you're always meeting new people there. So it kind of goes between those two, because it's two completely different crowds of people. Well, I will say that um, networking is one of our um, one of our larger. Well, I wouldn't say larger, but one of our biggest um, selling points that we have at the chamber, because 90 percent or more than that join the chamber to network. And so that's. Those are, you know, two of the opportunities that we have to network and to grow your business. And so I'm, as the facilitator of those programs, I'm very glad that <laughs> <laughs> that those are your, those are the biggest impacts you've had. So I'm, we're happy to have you and we're glad that you have joined the chamber. What advice would you give your younger self, knowing what you know about being, um, being in the IT industry and um, all the things that you've done in your career? What, what advice would you give your younger self? To take the step. A lot of things that I've not done has been because I've been too scared to take that next step. Uh, starting a business is terrifying. Uh, I lost a business back in 2008. You know, the economy went down. And working in the corporate world, it was, it was safe. You have that steady paycheck coming in. But I wasn't doing that which I'm passionate about. And I was becoming miserable in it. And that's when I had my wife come alongside of me. And she's the one who said, let's do this. And having someone there kind of gave me that extra boost and that confidence that was was necessary. But the advice to younger self was, is, you know, take that step. You know, I've got the, the Lord right there with me. He's going to catch me. I'm not going to, you know, if I fall, he'll pick me right back up. Just keep on going. But seeing him come through so often, I would just tell myself, hey, just like you've seen through your family, your history, just keep on going um, and just take the step. Don't be so scared of it. That's awesome advice. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Matt, so much for joining us today. Um, Again, our guest today was Matt Hoffman with Frontline Technology. Matt, we were so thrilled to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, We'd like to also thank Marlowe's Tavern for sponsoring our uh, Member Spotlight radio show. Marlowe's Tavern features the best of the best in American tavern fare served in a contemporary atmosphere. You can enjoy fresh and seasonal chef-inspired creations and unwind with one of their handcrafted cocktails. Marlowe's Tavern is a perfect is perfect for a business lunch, a bite with a family, or a special event. Join them for an experience that's genuinely yours, and they want you to find your neighborhood tavern at Marlowe'sTavern.com. Also, Marlowe's Tavern caters. We use them at the chamber for lots of events. Their kettle chips are to die for. Trust me, I'm a foodie. I should know. You visit Marlowe'sCatering.com to find out more. And for our listeners in Duluth and Buford, be sure to contact Samantha Gooley directly. Really quickly, I want to transition and let you guys know about some upcoming events that we have at the Chamber. Um, On October 23rd at 11 o'clock, we have our Small Business Awards. We do still have tickets available if you'd like to come and show your support for the small businesses in Gwinnett County that are nominated for some of our awards. We have some new awards this year, like our Founder Award. Um, The Founder Award recognizes a recipient that started small but thought big. Um, It's a top-tier recognition that will pay tribute to an entrepreneur who has reached the pinnacle of prosperity. 
We also this year have a new Emerging Entrepreneur Award, and it will go to a young professional who is shaking up the small business space. Um, and though, if you've read any of the finalists for our awards, you know that those emerging entrepreneurs are definitely making a name for themselves in the area. And then we have the Support System Award. Um, it said that a small business's best friends are an accountant, an attorney, and lender. This award recognizes the support that professional service industry provides to small businesses. Also coming up, we have our Fall Classic on October 29th at Bears Best. And I was told today that there are only 20 player spots left. So if you want to play golf, um, have a fun day with us chamber chamber people. You get out there and get your spot reserved. There's only 20 left. Um, 9 o'clock is the breakfast reception. And then 11 o'clock is our shotgun start. Um, we do still have, I think, a few sponsorships available. So if you're looking to sponsor to, for some recognition, and um, some exposure please get with us and we can get you a sponsor spot um, also networking Matt and I talked earlier about networking but some of the networking events we have coming up we've got our November 21st business after hours at Bears Best we've got our December 19th business after hours at Atlanta Classic Cars that's also our Toys for Tots drive, so you definitely don't want to miss that. Um, if you bring a toy for a tot and a guest or and or a guest, you can have an extra entry into our door prize drawings. And we have some fantastic door prizes at all of our Business After Hours events. And then, like Matt was um, telling you earlier, we have our Business Before Hours every Thursday at 7.30 at the Chamber. And we have Gwinnett Working every Friday morning at 9 o'clock at the Chamber. And networking is really just about building relationships. It's important that you, you're going to do business with people you know and people you trust. Um, and you don't trust somebody until you get to know them. So that's what we're all about with networking is building those relationships and getting to know um, your fellow chamber members so that you can grow your business and refer back and forth. So I would again would like to thank Matt Hoffman with Frontline Technology for being our guest today. This has been Gwinnett Chambers radio show and podcast member spotlight on Business Radio X. You can enjoy any of our episodes anytime by visiting businessradiox.com, selecting Gwinnett Studio, and then clicking on Member Spotlight. Until next time, I'm Sarah Persing, and you've been listening to Member Spotlight on Business Radio X. Mm-hmm.